what's happening guys i'm probably in a turkey and stuffing induced coma right now so i recorded this on wednesday just so you guys would have a little something on friday so just a quickie today a little uh the more you know like the nbc network used to do bing 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 the more you know today we're going to talk about the hidden capacitor now we all know about capacitors they come in many different sizes and types so what is a capacitor a capacitor by definition is a passive two terminal electrical component that stores electrical activity and or stores electrical energy in an electric field well what the hell does that mean well there's many uses for capacitors including blocking dc uh, smoothing signals tuning frequencies, stabilizing voltages. But one of the important ones there is tuning frequencies, adjusting frequencies, all has to do with the RC time constant, which we've talked about before. So now let's talk about the basic construction of a capacitor. What is in this guy or this guy? or this guy because they all do the same thing they're just different types and they have different specific purposes but let me grab a piece of paper which i thought i had ready but obviously don't and the pen i lose pens left and right i don't know what i do with them okay so basically most capacitors are two metallic plates and that even looks like the capacitor symbol doesn't it see how that works out and those metallic plates are separated by an insulator called the dielectric and the dielectric can be made of a number of things I'm off the top of my head here paper uh, plastic, mica, glass, a vacuum, and air. So, if you guys figured out where I'm going with this yet, if not, it's okay. So, our basic capacitor two metal plates separated by a dielectric which is what you've got inside one of these little ceramic capacitors it's also what you have inside of an electrolytic capacitor except our two plates are just wound in a spiral inside that can and then between them Is our dielectric it's the same principle as this two plates separated by an insulator now one of the things that you're probably very familiar with one of my main teaching tools in electrical engineering is a breadboard there's a couple of full-size ones stuck together there's a there's a half size one and there's a quarter size one now the thing is inside all of these are metal strips they're connected like this all of these vertical strips are connected together the horizontal ones are separate so what do we have here one two plates separated by a dielectric grab a knife here and if you've ever pulled apart a breadboard you know what I'm talking about look let's zoom in so what do we got here metal plates separated by plastic and air both excellent dielectrics so inside that breadboard 
are many capacitors. I mean, how many places we got? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, thirty-five. So you got seventeen and a half capacitors there. Now, granted, they are of a low value. How low? We're going to find that out in just a minute. But there's still a problem with that. And that problem has to do with one of the functions of capacitors, which is tuning and adjusting frequencies, especially higher frequencies. When we get above a megahertz, the capacitance of this breadboard can cause you a problem. So let's zoom back out. And I'm going to bring in a meter. Now, ideally, you want a dedicated LCR meter to do this. But I don't have a dedicated LCR meter here at home. But this Unity UT61E is an excellent meter. Now, I'm using really good quality cables, test leads. These are the ProMaster gold-plated test leads. I'm going to take these dingleberries off of here. So if we put our meter on capacitance, just those leads alone are giving us, what, 0.263 nanofarads. Now, we can zero that out, okay? And if we come in here to our breadboard and we measure two adjacent spots, look at that, 0 0.007 nanofarads. Come up here, we'll measure uh, another pair, 0 0.012 nanofarads. It is a small amount, but it is a significant amount, especially when dealing in higher frequencies. And that's something that we need to keep in mind and take into account. So if you're working on a high speed switching circuit, breadboarding it is probably going to have a small negative effect. But it's always there. And it's something we have to know about and something we have to contend with every day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks to all my patrons. And thanks to all of you who watch these videos and especially with us who comment. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Peace. <laughs>